Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 103rd episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 43rd episode of Season 2 titled The Wedding, Part 3. We begin this episode at the Command Center, where Alpha rehashes what happened last episode. <sighs> with the rangers and Zordon and how there are monsters in the theater. On the moon, the wedding is about to begin and Finster is going to officiate the ceremony. Turns out there are no musicians, so Zed makes Snizzard play the wedding march on the pipe organ. Then Rita comes in with a black veil, singing along to the song and making up lyrics for it. Finster asks for anyone who may object the wedding, and Goldar tries to, but Rita stops him. Goldar doesn't even want to give the rings over, but Rita grabs them, and they're now officially married. Alpha is in the command center, grabbing his own ass. Anyways, now it's revealed that Zed is Jewish, while everyone dances to Hava Nagila, while people jump over Snizzer's wagging tail. This is so freaking bizarre, and it lasts so much longer than it has any right to. Then Eye Guy pops an eye out for absolutely no reason. Anyways, the Rangers are fighting putties in the theater. I don't understand the end game here. Texter then attacks Tommy, and then Rocky just energy punches the ground in a way that we've never seen before, causing a miniature earthquake. Rita and Zed are leaving the moon to board Serpentera, where they will have a honeymoon. Sakajil also catches the bouquet in his mouth. They board the giant dragon and they take off, showing a horrible just married banner behind Serpentera that would have been better off just not being there in the first place. The rangers are now just walking into another room. Aisha talks about how the monsters are blocking the door. Then Pexter's head just comes in randomly and screams and leaves. <laughs> Billy also has an idea on how to get out. Also, Bulk and Skull see a koala and its baby go by and they decide to mimic it for no reason. Anyways, Aisha is feigning surrendering to the monsters. And then the others just toss a damn net over them. Where the hell did they get that? Tommy says, escape through the cave like before. Uh, there's nothing new here. Zed and Rita are having fun by Goldar calls, letting them know that the Power Rangers have escaped and are heading on foot toward the command center. They tell him to handle it, and Goldar yells at the monsters and putties to follow his lead into battle to bring the rangers to their knees. The rangers are now freeing the desert as monsters start to appear around them, making things mildly inconvenient for them, and they find the command center stupid quickly, running toward it. In Serpentera, Rita and Zed see that this is going on, and Rita starts to panic that they're getting a little too close to the command center, and Zed says, what's the worst that can happen if they get there? They have to come out eventually. Fair point. Now the rangers are just magically in the command center, helmetless, and Billy fixes Alpha right away, and then he just gets Zordon back right away. Everyone is talking off screen for some reason, and they just back to action. The rangers call out their Thunder Zords, forming the Thunder Megazord, while Tommy calls out the White Tiger Zord, converting it into warrior mode. They then start to have a super rough, spliced fight with all these damn monsters. And as much as they're attempting to make this seem even a little bit interesting, it's not. Seriously, they're just taking them all on one by one, which defeats the purpose of an onslaught of giant monsters. And what feels like 10 minutes later, the Thunder Saber and the Thunder Lightning Bolt attack is used to pretty much kill each monster one by one. On Serpentera, Rita and Zed fight, and Zed basically tells her to go back to the kitchen. In Australia, the six Ranger teens teleport in, and their chaperone is like, where were you guys? I said two hours, and they just go with her. Alpha also notices that Bulk and Skull are just in the outback, and he teleports them back to the place where they were abducted. Then Alpha apologizes for being an actually interesting character for once. The end. Well, that was kind of a rough ending to a three-parter, huh? Especially that damn Megazord battle. It's pretty clear that the Ranger teens weren't on set for most of it, which is why part two has no sign in their faces whatsoever. Again, I do have to applaud the writers for that because I can't imagine trying to take on a three-parter where your entire cast was going to be absent 90% of the time. Other than that, yeah, Rita is back on the show for good now. So here's a good question. Why? Turns out children were very terrified of Lord Zed as a character, and parents started to complain a lot about how their children were so frightened by him. So in an attempt to appease these parents, they brought back Rita to lighten up Zed's demeanor and mood, making him a bit less threatening overall. I'm not totally against this to be honest, because it creates a cool storyline that I kind of like seeing. Next time we have yet another three-parter, but this one involves an old friend in green. But until then, may the power protect you.